Could Bitcoin ever be replaced by some other crypto? I think there's about zero chance of that. The CFO said they would consider adding Bitcoin to their, um, to their balance sheet. And the reason they're thinking that is because corporations have trillions of dollars in cash. And where do they put it? It took Microsoft 44 years to be a trillion dollars. It took Apple right. 42 years to be a trillion dollar network. It yeah. took Amazon 24 years to be a trillion dollar network. It took Google 22 years to be a trillion dollar network. So government bonds aren't gonna do much for you. But the big concern among a lot of CFOs and corporate treasurers is inflation. It took Bitcoin 12 years to become a trillion dollar network. And there's nothing else. Right. There is no other trillion dollar network. And it has been growing. It was growing at 200% a year. Could Bitcoin fail or be replaced by a different cryptocurrency with superior attributes to Bitcoin? In this video, Michael Saylor speaks on the chances of Bitcoin failing or being replaced in the future. Since its inception, Bitcoin has always been the front-running cryptocurrency, always hovering at 60% of total dominance of the entire cryptocurrency market. However, the question does need to be addressed, could it be replaced? Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we go over one recent piece of on-chain Bitcoin data that suggests where the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here. Also, only a tiny percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Could Bitcoin ever be replaced by some other crypto? I think there's about zero chance of that. Bitcoin would be the most successful thing you've ever seen in your life. Period. That's a big one. <laughs> For example, it took Microsoft 44 years to be a trillion dollars. It took Apple right. 42 years to be a trillion dollar network. It yeah. took Amazon 24 years to be a trillion dollar network. It took Google 22 years to be a trillion dollar network. It took Bitcoin 12 years to become a trillion dollar network. And there's nothing else. Right. There is no other trillion dollar network. So yeah. what you have is a decentralized digital network which is in essence transforming analog money or analog assets to digital assets it's 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 global it's running everywhere on the earth and it has been growing it was growing at 200 percent a year try mm -hmm. to try to remember when amazon or apple or google grew at 200 percent that a year, yeah right absolutely it's growing at 200 percent a year for a decade until march of 2020 and in march of 2020 that monetary fire that was burning at 200 percent a year uh, hit the pandemic and and the rate of currency expansion increased by a factor of three. We went from expanding the money supply at seven percent a year to expanding the money supply at 20, 24 percent a year. We're looking at the money supply expanding at 15 percent a year or more for the next four to eight years. So how do you feed a monetary fire? And the answer is you pour money on it. Right. And so. So the macroeconomics are, are driving this network to grow faster. The network, it accelerated. It's, it was growing 200% a year. Now it's growing 400 plus percent a year. Okay, again, give me an example of anything this scale that ever grew 400% a year. And, and in terms of inertia, the trillion dollars is trillion dollars of monetary energy. That means you've got more than 100 million people that have a trillion dollars invested in this brand. This is the most, this is the only brand in the history of the world. It's a trillion dollar brand, mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's like think about the value of Coca-Cola as the brand. In, in the minds of 100 million plus people, you have this idea and it's worth a trillion dollars. How are you gonna rip that idea out of people's heads? 100 yeah. million people, thousands and thousands of companies, huge amounts of energy, a huge amount of inertia. This, and, and this is the base layer digital asset network that they're all focusing upon. And so as they build their technology around it, like Square and PayPal, and as they invest in it, like Tesla, right. and as the, the message spreads, that's just a, that's a lot more energy and uh, a lot more momentum than any company or any other brand or any other idea I've seen. I think 10,000 companies or 10,000 projects have, at, have attempted uh, 
to displace Bitcoin. I think they've all failed. Yeah. Um, the only way you're going to be successful with another crypto asset network is if you if you target a totally different use case than than base treasury asset. Mm. So if it's a differentiated thing uh, with a different market segment, a different use case, then perhaps. But in fact, the market has spoken. Uh, like I'll say it again: in the history of the human race, we've never had a trillion-dollar digital monetary network. It's the most right. successful thing humanity has created. It is creating value, and and uh, gaining market adoption faster than anything that we can point our finger at in the history of the human race. So, the f you know, there's a hundred thousand entrepreneurs that would like to be Google, or like to displace Facebook, sure. or like to displace iOS, and they're all going to have a you know, this is a better thing. But at the end of the day, you if you're staring at a trillion dollar network that has that is more successful than everything you've seen in your life, that's growing faster than anything on Earth that's being adopted everywhere in the world. And, you know, and, and you're going to you're going to then opt to ignore it in favor of a project in somebody's garage. I mean, it just seems <laughs> irrational. When, yeah. when the other thing is 10 times as big as Bitcoin doing the same exact thing, then maybe it's logical. But right okay. now the market is spoken, right? Yeah. And, and if, you, if you don't actually accept Bitcoin, then what do you think about Facebook, Google, Apple, and Amazon? Because those things are growing much slower oh, with yeah. much weaker network effects right now. Right. Bitcoin transcends any company, any CEO, any country it's spreading everywhere and it truly is the most successful decentralized technology human beings can point toward right so I, right. I don't know what else you'd point toward in terms of decentralization other than this so well i, I would I say the other are... things they're they're ventures and and they're and they're attempting to do something and to the extent that they do something unique they may yeah. find a constituency yeah yeah, and I think your point, right, is is just that its capacity and its ability to compound on growth is just unmatched and being able to go into that market at this point, especially at the state it's in right now, which is, you know, astronomical, uh, that's a pretty uh, high ticket to, to cross over. With that being the case, Bitcoin, of course, in the last year has grown an exponential amount uh, and now to a magnitude. When you see this kind of growth, what is holding back, you know, nation states and governments from converting to cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, as their essentially their monetary system. Why not? There's, well, it's a, it's a trillion dollar uh, network and um, that makes it one tenth the size of gold. Right. And so it's and you're seeing it trading maybe four or five, six billion dollars a day. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a suitable monetary network for a corporation or um, an individual that has a scale of investment in the billions or less. But if you wanted uh, if you wanted to store 10 to 100 billion dollars, it's not quite big enough yet. Gotcha. And so there's a natural inertia. It, it takes a, a typical individual. It takes them six months from the point that they hear about Bitcoin to go through the educational process. And then from the point you decided you wanted to buy it, it would probably take you 12 weeks before you got comfortable with the on ramp, the custodian right. and the technique mm -hmm. for corporations. You double or triple that companies mm. have corporate governance. They have mm -hmm. compliance. They have board of directors. It would be you know, certain companies, Tesla, they're lightning fast, but the typical company, they think that if they do something and it takes a year to get around to it, that was lightning fast. Yeah. So the natural, <laughs> the natural adoption cycle is going to be private companies, midsize, uh, early adopter, technical forward thinking, public companies. Right. Then it will ripple. Normally, uh, small or midsize countries, they're they're going to come last. I mean, before them will come big institutional investors and yeah. then the very conservative institutional investors. You know, the insurance companies have seven trillion dollars or something in assets. And and so they'll probably be, you know, three levels from now. I think insurance companies right now have about, have about a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin exposure that we know of. Right. And, uh, and you know, the next step would be for them to increase it by a factor of 10. Sure. 
But you can you can see, I, I mean, I wouldn't be holding my breath for the nation states first. I mean, nor do we really need to. Mm -hmm. This is a treasury asset. Yeah. And so this is the solution to every there's 100 million companies in the world and there's 5000 mega public companies and there's 10,000 institutional investors that have billion dollars worth of capital or more. And so this is a lot more interesting for any of them at this scale. And I would think that the adoption will go from this point from 1 trillion to 10 trillion and then it'll creep up toward 100 trillion. Right. Somewhere between 10 and 100 trillion you'll start to see small countries probably start to pay attention to it, but not right now. I mean, between 1 trillion and 10 trillion, this is like gold investors reallocating yeah. from gold and silver investors reallocating from silver and someone with a bunch of cash in a savings account saying, "Why don't I just put my money from a savings account into you know, Bitcoin, and, and there's more than enough of that demand, you know, for the, the near next two, three, four years. So there's Michael Saylor on why there is a 0% chance of Bitcoin being replaced, and I have to agree. Now, for a recent piece of on-chain Bitcoin data, some very interesting data out from Glassnode is the minor net position change. So from this graph, we can see the relationship between Bitcoin miners and if they are selling or accumulating the Bitcoin they are mining. From here, we can see a clear trend from miners selling off Bitcoin in January and early February to now accumulating Bitcoin being mined. This is great bullish data to see as not only does it show Bitcoin miners are expecting the price to go upwards, but also they are removing supply from the market, pushing the price up. Definitely some interesting data to think about. If the miners of Bitcoin are thinking it will be worth more in the future, who's to say otherwise? For more in-depth on-chain data coming out later today, check out our next video dropping in a few hours on Robert Kiyosaki. Let me know what you think of this on-chain data in the comments. I hope that provided you with some value. I'll see you guys in the next video and as always, have a great day.